Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while since the last time I've made any updates and posted anything and you guys are probably wondering whether or not I've given up on this project or not. Uh, but as you can see uh, behind me, things look a little different now and there's just been a lot that's gone in uh, my personal life and with the car and all kinds of stuff. So let me explain and let's just get started. So I will try to keep this a little bit short if I can on the whole explanation of life stuff that has uh, been happening uh, since the last time I've done a video update. In short, basically, I, you know, at the time had been working for a company uh, kind of long term and decided to uh, leave that company and go out on my own uh, back as a contractor slash starting my own marketing company. And that's something that I did uh, a long time ago when you know, I first started the blade idea and got it to SEMA and had investors and all of those things. And one of the things that happened through that process is I ended up kind of leaving all of my marketing uh, contracts and just people I had uh, relationships with in the business world, uh, kind of handed those off to other companies and decided to go full time on the blade since I had investors. Well, if you've been following the uh, the project and just my whole story and everything, you know that the whole investor thing went sideways uh, and upside down and all different kinds of directions. And so after that, it took a while to recover and just get back on my feet, you know, from from the, that kind of crazy chaos. And through that process, uh, I ended up, you know, getting some other jobs with the uh, companies and stuck with them for a while and since then i've now gone back to being contract and building up my marketing company and a few other businesses as well and i've been really focusing on that uh, for really the past couple of years and so it's just been one of those things that uh, i've been really focused on to support the family and support the car since i'm kind of self-funding it now and i don't really uh, have you know the investment opportunities and I really don't want them I don't think uh, anymore it's just such a nightmare deal but uh, at the same time I've been building other companies and building up you know other stuff and you know figuring out other solutions to this and just through that process I decided to uh, not work on the blade as much and focus on those also in that time period we ended up uh, moving started to move out of state and came up with some other opportunities and kind of stayed within texas which is where we're located uh, and decided to move into a new house which is where we're at now and uh, it's been kind of crazy because it's an older house and it's taken a lot of uh, time to fix a lot of things and we had our pool explode basically uh, and had to redo it and uh, you know electrical systems going crazy and just all kinds of different things that we've had to deal with uh, with the house so that's kind of taking up my time this year I was kind of meaning to get to the videos a lot sooner but the new house and some new opportunities have come up needed to focus on and so that's kind of where I'm at now but with uh, with these opportunities and where our life is at the moment I now have some extra time to work on a blade and have some people helping and there's just been a lot that we've been focusing on if you've been following me on Instagram or anything like that and if you're not following me at all and you're new to this whole channel and you've made it this far <laughs> I highly suggest that you go back and check out my other videos uh, just to kind of catch up and see you know what this whole project's been about and where it plans to go so uh, yeah with that, you know, let me uh, kind of explain a few things about the future of where I'm taking the blade now and what's happening and what kind of changes and why I'm calling this the whole uh, blade reboot, uh, basically. And, you know, there's been a lot of things that I uh, didn't really focus on in the videos early on, as most of my videos are mostly about the design and creating the body, but I never really showed you guys uh, exactly what I was building the body on. And a lot of people think that the chassis and all the drivetrain and suspension is from another vehicle or other vehicles. 
and some of that's true and some of it's not. Uh, the majority of everything on the chassis is hand by, handmade by me and uh, even welded and all that stuff. So I figured this time around, I've stripped the whole vehicle down as you can see in the background. And the idea now is to really start this video series over, but at the ground level and to take you guys through the whole journey of creating the chassis and the suspension uh, what it takes, what's involved, how you can do it, what's the easiest way to do it and the best way to do it on the budget and still end up with something that's you know accurate and strong, has the ability to be driven on the streets and to be safe and that's an area that uh, I really wanted to go back and address on this vehicle because we built things so fast during the SEMA time that we kind of skipped some things uh, that I felt were pretty important, but basically it came down to if people were not going to see it, we were not going to spend time and effort on doing it. And that saved us a lot of time, but then taking this out and getting it track tested and doing all those things was a little on the sketchy side. Now, it did do really well on the track and it went really fast. It makes a ton of power. Uh, it handled really well. It really just kind of, you know, amazed everybody and myself included, especially because before I even took it on track, I tried my hardest to break it. And the track and through all kinds of things <laughs> uh, to try to break something on a suspension or chassis or whatever at kind of lower speeds just to make sure things were safe before we got out there at high speeds uh, but it turned out to work out really well and kind of showed me that at least the base platform that I have uh, set for the blade now is is pretty good um, I think it could be a lot better and that's where these new video series are going to focus uh, I've been a do some cleanup in this garage, get the lighting done better because I have a big giant light, as you can see in my hand, just shining in my face right now. Uh, I'm gonna install some new lights in the ceiling, redo the garage a little bit, uh, organize and clean up so that we can kind of dive into this uh, deeper and start going through all the specific things that need to be done to build a really fantastic, what I call super muscle car, you know, which is really, a supercar as far as speed and, and, and power goes but has all the classic features of a muscle car uh, engine being in front and just being kind of aggressive and muscular in design and so that's kind of where that term comes from but uh, yeah so anyway that's where I'd uh, like to share with you guys and right now I'll kind of take you a little closer to some of the uh, crazy stuff on the chassis and talk about that all right guys, here we are uh, with the chassis and I'm on the other side of the camera now pointing at things. <laughs> uh, I have kind of a new camera, so it's a little different. I'm trying to figure out how to use it. It's a much more professional camera and doesn't really handle um, dark areas. So I had to open up the back garage, uh, just a little bit more light uh, on the back here so that you guys could see. Um, as f I guess let's just start with some of the things we're going to be addressing in the future videos. So one of the big things that I'm focused on is not only the chassis, which is the main part of the structure uh, of the vehicle, but also the suspension. So I ended up using a custom rear suspension setup that was developed and designed by Steeda uh, for the 0405 Cobra Mustangs. And a lot of people didn't know that back then those Mustangs had independent rear suspension. I've even known owners that had the vehicle <laughs> and didn't know that they had independent rear suspension in it. So it was kind of a, an Enigma vehicle because it was the only time that Ford ever put an IRS setup in a, in a Mustang. And what a lot of people didn't know is it was a really, really well built and real well designed um, independent suspension. 
and they had put a lot of research and a lot of design into the setup and it was it was pretty amazing so I ended up um, kind of stumbling upon that and it ended up being a really good fit as far as the width and the size that I needed for blade version one and this uh, this setup uh, the you know is a little more unique because Steeda went in and redeveloped the whole rear end uh, corrected some geometry for high powered uh, applications and so it just fit perfect for us now we had to modify it quite a bit but other than that it really allowed us to just drop in a, a well-designed suspension system that uh, really fit you know the particular wheelbase of our vehicle which was important you know so a lot of these suspension systems uh, are designed at specific angles and things that are determined on the weight and the placement of, of things in the car and where the wheelbase is and there's just a million factors that go into it and it was the quickest way to uh, get a system in place that aligned with all of our previous engineering numbers that we had on the original chassis so yeah uh, here's the front and the front end is kind of a mess I've been disassembling a lot of it half the vehicle is you know our chassis system is disassembled I've removed all the wiring and a lot of the brake system and all that stuff because I've been engineering and drawing everything up in CAD I'm gonna redesign and redevelop a new knuckle system for for the uh, Brembo brakes and then the whole chassis is getting widened and if you remember in the earlier videos I had uh, or not earlier but the latest videos that I did I ended up widening the whole body of the blade to about eight inches added you know in width to the overall car and it's quite a bit from its original uh, dimensions and so doing that um, uh, is uh, making us have to rethink out the chassis and and uh, re widen you know just redevelop the whole front end so uh, so I have to widen the whole front area which is actually good it's something I really wanted to do and this is not the original design that we initially wanted to but it was kind of the quickest way to get to our goals for SEMA back in the day uh, we're gonna replace a lot of the tubing and matter of fact all the front end stuff is going away and I'm redesigning and redeveloping and rewelding a whole new front end uh, I'll probably do the same for the midsection and definitely the whole back end of the vehicle is going to be redesigned. Now we're still going to stick with the pushrod uh, style suspension setup which is what you see here in the back and this is uh, made by a special company uh, by or a couple of companies are actually involved in it which one's I think Tractive and then uh, the other one is uh, I think called uh, Inertia Dynamics I think. so. Not really 100% sure. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, it's been a while since I've talked to them, but I plan to dig in to the suspension more. It's kind of a rat's nest at the moment because of all of the uh, wiring to the suspension, because this is an electronic suspension system that uh, you can control from your phone or from uh, a MoTeC system or other devices to give feedback to the suspension to tell it what it needs to do. Uh, during uh, racing or a racetrack or certain conditions so that's pretty cool and this would be the dash and seating area it's kind of a mess uh, that's the transmission this is a Tremec uh, T56 Magnum and it's special built with uh, some alternate hardened gears and it's got a double clutch setup and a uh, uh, quick time steel uh, bell housing so we needed all that to handle the power um, if you guys remember the engine uh, makes a 14 ish hundred horsepower horsepower so it's kind of high up there on the horsepower and it's a, this is a, a special built uh, motor by Ford that's a, the illuminator that we had purchased from Ford and then they went in and added some additional uh, things did some additional polishing I think replaced the valves it was a different valve type uh, the cams are a little different from the standard illuminator cams uh, and then it's got all hardened gears through the valve train system so it's a little different uh, it costs a lot more and it can make well over you know a thousand horsepower pretty easily so sticking with that and then I have electric steering. So this is a typical steering system out of a Ford, but this is the Ford Racing uh, 
steering module so it's programmable and you can uh, alter its feeling and its feedback uh, uh, based on settings and stuff from from your steering wheel or whatever you want to do. Um, as you can tell I'm using a lot of Ford components and there's a reason for that. Uh, they were not really a sponsor but it's a supportive company for what we were doing and they kind of gave us good deals on a lot of stuff and allowed us to actually use it <laughs> which was a big deal and we had you know some special stuff that was going to uh, happen after this car uh, made it to a production level but you know obviously it didn't make it there and that's still the goal at some point you know uh, but right now I just want to finish it get it done and have fun with it uh, yeah so more stuff the brake system is going to change all of this mounting dash stuff is going to change and the whole rear structure back here is uh, going to be replaced with a lighter uh, more lower profile setup so uh, you guys will get to see all that coming up in future videos and we're going to end up replacing a lot of stuff that is going to actually save weight and then add additional strength and that's going to be exciting because that was one of the main things I was worried about when I was track testing it is just is this you know set up the right way for strength but it seemed to do pretty good um, but I'm going to make it better so yeah so as you can see over here there's the body what's left of it and that is going to go back into storage uh, it's pretty much done all the all the white fenders that you see um, over here has all been replaced and configured or not uh, modeled uh, and all the body work's been done on it obviously I'm gonna to have to end up doing more body work later and the whole front end is already in storage so so there you go um, that's basically it just wanted to guys give you guys a quick tour of this and kind of the whole explanation of where things are at and where I've been and what's going on uh, what's gonna happen in the future and where we can take all this so if you guys have made it this far <laughs> which I uh, hope you have but uh, you know um, just uh, stay tuned on the next video and if you can please you know like and share and uh, pass this video around let everybody know that I'm back at it and let's uh, get this stuff going and feel free to ask questions let me know I'm gonna try to do a uh, kind of a questions or AMA type deal or ask me anything uh, on either YouTube or another platform or something so that's going to come up here in the future and just have a lot of things going on um, and excited to, to actually have some more time to start working on this and uh, while I have my companies uh, doing what they're doing and I'll go into more details about those uh, later because they're performance oriented companies and I definitely want to share what I have going on with that and that will come up later. But anyway, uh, thanks a lot and I'll see you guys in the next video.